Hey there, Har here, and today I'm making a video on different Guardian Druid builds. Alright, so first off, we're gonna start with my go to build in most dungeons. This is the Moonfire plus Thorns build. Um, depending on the dungeon, I will run Earth Warden. So, first off, this middle area, whether you play Tooth and Claw, Earth Warden or Reinforce, Reinforced Fur is all dependent on which dungeon you're playing, um, things like that. Sometimes I will run Bristling, Bristling Fur, and this one is also dungeon dependent to me, but it's more of a route dependent thing. So one of the examples is on Groovy Life Pool. I have a bit of a weird route. Um, where I do pull a lot of whelps and the reason why I pull these whelps is to get my incarn off cooldown as fast as possible and bristling fur helps with that. This allows me to pull usually uh, these next two packs along with a third chill weaver pack so I'm able to pull three chill weavers and if you've ever tanked this on higher keys, you know their uh, ice bolts absolutely destroy you. So having Incarn for this is uh, pretty necessary. Um, and then same thing again, when I do these whelps, I usually pull these slightly after. I need to adjust the route a little bit. But yeah, when I usually pull these whelps, um, it's again to help me reset Incarn. And that way, I'm able to pull the mini boss with. Uh, usually, we like to pull this Chill Weaver into the room as well, along with these two. And again, you will need um, Incarn to survive two Chill Weavers plus a mini boss. You can delay these two though. So that's my. That's usually my um, decision making on whether I want to run Bristling Fur or Brambles. Um, other cases of Bristling Fur would be uh, Bolster Weeks, when ads were about to die. Um, you can pop a Bristling Fur, gives you a few more stacks of Iron Fur, helps with those melee hits. Um, so in general, this build is my go-to for two reasons. Number one, it is the fastest way to get Incarn off cooldown. And two, uh, you kind of don't need to, I guess, make much of a decision in between balancing your rage on Rays or uh, or Iron Fur. This is just straight spam Iron Fur, so melee hits are pretty much never an issue. And Thorns of Iron usually does a very good amount of damage in, with this build. It'll probably be around 15% of my overall, while Moonfire is about 20, 25, 20, 23 to 25% of my overall, and uh, Thrash is uh, around 20, with Mangle below that. Um, the other thing, I guess there's one, th one other thing that I forgot to mention is uh, the reason why I like this build a lot um, the shorter Incarn lines up extremely well for my group's cooldowns. Because I run with three casters, or usually two casters on two minute cooldowns, an S Priest and a Voker, and sometimes a Boomkin slash Feral. The Feral CDs are, are whatever, um, fairly short, so I don't have to worry about that. But for the Evoker and S Priest, they are on two minute timers and a lot of my routes are kind of built around that specifically where I need to pull very big and then I need to reset Incarn fast with a mini pack on the next one and then into another very big pull. If I don't have this kind of Incarn uh, timer resets uh it not only will you know 
keep me safe, but also it'll fuck my teammates CD usage. So for that reason, I like to go to this build a lot. It's primarily because we have our routes down. So that kind of leads me into the second build, um, which is the raise build. While I actually do think the raise build is higher DPS, it may not be as uh, good for me specifically, because again, like I said, um, my in-card timers will be messed up a bit and that might screw up my teammates' cooldowns as well, since I can't do, you know, the, the same pulls I would normally do. I would have to change my routes a bit, which means they would have to change their cooldowns as well. <clears throat> And I don't think we're going to put in the the time to do that for some of our dungeons. Some of our dungeons are, uh, I guess, we have all of our cooldowns set in stone, and we're probably not going to mess with it too much. But this build uh, does do a lot of damage. If you want to play Raze without the Thorns, so with Rage of the Sleeper, this is also viable, but keep in mind you are losing a lot of damage from not taking Thorns. It won't be the 15% if you're playing just the Moonfire Thorns, but you will be losing about 6-8%. This one point is 6-8% of your overall usually. Um... I did have a video on this build, or uh, just this Gigadam build on a 20 Nakut, I believe, and it does do a lot of damage. I guess I had one point there instead, but it does do a lot of damage. Um, you can play it on dungeons where there's more linear damage, so it'd be things like Nakud on Halls of Valor. Um, what else would be linear? Maybe a Jura Vault. Jura Vault is a bit of a weird one. I know there are a lot of... Um, it, it's linear for me because my teammates know what to stop. But it's it wouldn't be linear if, you know, you're pugging. Your teammates don't stop Crystal Fury frontals. They don't stop the Icy Cutters. Um, or maybe you don't kite us the icy cutters, then uh, I can definitely see this build getting you killed. Um, a prime example would be Jade Temple. I do not think I would run this build on a Jade Temple. Um, maybe with Rage of the Sleeper, like you run, you run something like this. Maybe like this on Temple, but two issues with this. Number one. Uh, Incarn matters a lot, at least in the courtyard for me. So the shorter the Incarn, uh, the bigger the pull, essentially, or the faster your pulls. And two, I don't think Raze is good because it lowers your single target damage and there are a lot of uh, prio targets in Jade. So not only do you have four bosses, you also got uh, quote-unquote mini bosses. So you got your giant infester shaws, you got your water ellies, um, your songbird, your fish. Those all have higher health and tooth and claw will help with that prio damage. All right, um, we'll go to the next build. Raise plus UFR. I have tried this build, and this is also a build where it works pretty well in most dungeons, surprisingly. I thought the damage would be worse, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It'll obviously be less damage than the Moonfire build. However, you do feel a bit tankier outside of your incarn. Um, this will be a slower incarn build, so your incarns will be, you know, slightly, slightly slower. Uh, that is fine 
it'll still be around like maybe 215, 2 to 215. Um, you can still pull big inside Incarn with this build. It does feel decently tanky. I personally would not play this though, because uh, as you push higher keys, you obviously need the damage. But I understand this being the go to for a lot of people. They really like the Ursox Fury. What I don't want people to fall into the trap of though is seeing the healing from Ursox Fury and feeling like, oh my god, I cannot drop Ursox Fury, otherwise I'm gonna die. Uh, this is a shield, similar to Earth Warden. Um, similar to your shield rings, things like that. It is a shield that will have, you know, 100% healing efficiency. There will be no overhealing. That being said, um, it obviously does help with, you know, certain tank busters. It'll give you that, that smaller, that small extra protective layer that will help. But... A lot of the times, it will not be the difference between you getting one shot and not getting one shot. So what I mean by that is on Jade Temple, playing Ursox Fury will not save you from a double tank buster. Or, I mean, double tank buster perhaps, but it won't save you on a higher key level triple tank buster and, you know, notorious last pack, the quad tank buster what will save you in those kind of pulls are the 25% DRs the 30% DR from uh, bark skin you know your double SI charges 50% each incarn those are the things that will save you incarn 30% increased max health that extra 30% health will mean get, like getting one shot and not getting one shot Usually how I normally do that last pack is Incarn, uh, Bark Skin plus Rage for the first set of four, SI for the next set of four, another SI for the next set of four, and then uh, from there I'll usually Kite and or um, Disorienting Roar. Uh, when I see that they're about to cast, I'll be saving a GCD to Disorienting Roar. But not having this Rage as a Sleeper, is uh, very, very dangerous. It means you will have to kite probably earlier, and that will mean more little shawls, um, higher chance for your teammates to die. But overall, I think this is a pretty good build to start off with as a bear druid. You will feel pretty good outside of Incarn, or better at least. You will definitely feel better. Uh, but if you have your routes down, <clears throat> I personally would say shorter Incarn is better. Because in Incarn, you cannot die. If you do die in Incarn, usually you fuck up elsewhere. Either you're not pressing Frenzied Regen when things are about to hit you, or uh, you know, you're know you eating frontals that you shouldn't be eating. That's usually how you die with Incarn. Alright, lastly, the no Incarn build. Fair warning, I did not get to test this one much, but... I was not a fan of this build. Um, I can't do the pulls I would normally do with Incarn. And it feels extremely bad doing so. I feel like this is a kind of build where you can do like two packs, two packs, two packs. Um, which wouldn't be the worst. But this is not a build I would ever run with my group. Uh, like I had mentioned before, because they're two minute timers or CDs. Uh, it is very important that I pull big during those. And if I try to pull big with this, I, I die. Um, I need that Incarn 30%. 
a lower cooldown. Uh, maybe not the 30% health on all packs on every time I pull, pull big, but definitely I need the uh, lower cooldown on Incarn so I can uh, pull big every two minutes. All right. Um, is there anything I'm missing? Not too much. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it clears up some of the questions. Feel free to drop by in the stream to ask about any of the builds or, you know, leave the questions in comments below. I am a lot more responsive on Twitch. I, you know, fair warning, I am a lot more responsible on Twitch because I am streaming currently like 10 to 12 hours a day. Um, but I will try my best to answer most questions on YouTube as well. All right. Good luck with your next keys and I hope you guys enjoyed.